Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Donna Olson. And for those of you who don't know, I am now the director of the Salem South Lion District Library. It's good to see you here. Our mission at the library is to educate, enrich, and empower our community. And this session and tomorrow's session fulfills that mission. So let me thank, let us all thank Dave and Deborah Neal, the Lion Theater, for hosting this event. And of course, the South Lion Herald, hometown, home, hello, hometown, home, hometown, hometown newspapers for providing the moderator. I'm not going to turn around and look at Brad. Thank you, Brad. You're welcome. And Rich Perry for videoing the event. Thank you, Rich. So let's begin. So today we have a Meet the Mayoral Candidate Forum for our write-in candidates. So starting, okay, I'm in front of, I'm in front of her. <laughs> Let's start with Kennison Burkowski, Ashley Instead, Jamie Nelson, Dan Pelchett, William, William Greg Powell, Richard Anthony Vasella, Brandon Trent Yelp. Ladies and gentlemen, our write-in candidates running for the position of mayor of the city of South, city of South Lyon. Thank you. Now, here are the rules for today. Each candidate will have three minutes to introduce themselves, their qualifications, and why they are running to become the next mayor of our city. Each candidate has received three pre-event questions before today's event. Each will be giving one minute to respond to each of these three questions. Index cards will be available to the audience. I believe you have them. If, if not, just wave your hand and one of our wonderful students will be right there with you. But the index cards will be available to write down your questions, and these questions will be read by our moderator. Questions should be addressed to all candidates. This is important. Each candidate will have one minute to respond. <coughs> After all audience questions have been answered, each, each candidate will have one minute to make a closing, concluding statement. The forum will be videotaped and streamed via South Lion Cable 19 and the library's video site. Visit our website to access. So let me introduce you to our, our timers and students. Megan Hibbs, Shelby Milligan. Hi guys. I've fallen off stages, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> And here is Brad Cadrich, the editor, South Lion Herald, who will, be our, who will be our moderator this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cadrich. Thank you, Donna. Um, if, if you've, okay. um, if you, if you've got questions written down, make sure the, the young ladies up front get them. Does anybody have questions written down already? If you guys want to go and, and swing and get them. Um, just make sure I get them. Um, so we're going to start with the three minute um, introductions. And we'll, we'll just begin here on the left. Okay, hi, I'm Kenison Borkowski. I'm really excited to see how many people are here today. I wasn't sure what to expect, so this is good. And everybody's face looks friendly, so I think we're all in good hands, right? Um, I'll give you a little bit about my background. I work in finance. I um, do project management for software projects for a multinational company. Um, I work with cross-functional teams and I'm accustomed to diverse personalities 
and sidestepping political tactics to get the job done. I'm sensible. I can see the big picture and I'm not afraid to say no. It's actually one of the requirements of my job to be able to say no if something doesn't make sense. And I'm also not afraid of not knowing the answer. I'm good at reaching out to the experts and learning things as I go. So um, those are the things that I think will help me work with City Council and make this a good team. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ashley Enstead. It's a little weird hearing my voice in the mic. <laughs> um, it's wonderful to see all of you out here today. I'm so excited for this forum. I'm also really excited to be running for, for mayor for the city of South Lyons, such a great place. Um, before I get started, I'd like to give a quick thank you to the organizers for putting together such a great forum this afternoon. So thank you once again. Um, I'd like to take a couple of minutes of your time to tell you about myself and why I want to be your mayor. Um, I graduated from MIT with a dual degree in management and engineering. I'm a software engineer at, now at a uh, major NASDAQ company in the area. Um, I live in South Lyon with my husband Brady, our dog Nani, and our cat Lilo. Brady works as a mechanical engineer here at a uh, local manufacturing firm. And we're both pretty involved with the community here in South Lyon. I'm an active member of the South Lyon Qantas Club, and we both love to participate in the events that take place in town, like Pumpkin Fest and concerts in the Caddy Park. South Lyon is a vibrant community, and my family is very happy here. As I worked at Kite Fest, Blues, Brews, and Brats, and other community events with the Kiwanis Club, I realized that I could make a strong impact in a leadership role here in South Lyon. I believe that my management background and strong interpersonal skills would make me an excellent mayor. If elected, I have three main goals. First, I want to use my experience in economics and statistical analysis to balance the city's budget and lay the groundwork for strong finances in the years to come. Second, I want to prioritize finding grants that will help fund improvements to Volunteer Park. For instance, adding night lights to the park could attract sporting tournaments to South Lyon and bring business into our booming downtown. Finally, I want to promote policies that will further grow the downtown. I'd love for the downtown to be a place where people will choose to go over places like Northville and Brighton. I will continue to support our economic and downtown development director in his effort to attract more companies to South Lyon. I will also, of course, continue to hold the wonderful community events that South Lyon prides itself on. I'm sensitive to the needs of our senior community as well. I'll always be mindful of the seniors and their contributions to our community. I strongly support the People's Express and the Center for Active Adults, and I will go out of my way to make sure the Center for Active Adults is kept at a location that is close to our senior community. I'm super excited to hear from my fellow candidates today and to answer any main questions that you, the audience members, may have. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Pelchett. I'm 34 years old and a lifetime resident and a 2001 graduate of South Line High School. I'm a graduate of Spex Howard School of Media Arts. I've also worked for South Line Community Schools as a member of the technology department for the past 15 years. <clears throat> Additionally, for the last three years, I have had the privilege of working on the City of South Line Cable Commission alongside some other great members of our community. And together, in three short years, we have brought back an asset to the city that showcases our city and its many events, including this one today. When I found out that there would be an opening for the mayoral seat, I knew, test, test, one, two, test, test, I knew that I, knew that I had to get further involved. I love South Lyon, and I do not want to stand by idly while we continue to push forward on vital issues facing our hometown. Since I announced my candidacy, I have been out knocking on doors throughout the city in an effort to find out which key issues are important to our neighbors. And if I haven't been to yours yet, I hope to see you within the next nine days. <clears throat> I have learned a lot, and I don't plan to stop. I believe that accessibility and open lines of communication are cornerstones to local government. Lastly, I am a solutions-oriented person. As a member of the South Lyon Community Schools Tech Department, we don't have a choice other than to find a solution. I won't be a person <clears throat> who acknowledges a problem, complains about it, and fails to identify any answers. We will all need to be work willing to work together to achieve a common goal, South Lyon prosperity. I believe that my skill set, demeanor, and drive make me the best choice to be your next mayor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for everybody coming out. Um, just to 
Hello. Mm -hmm. Just to give a little bit uh, about me, um, my name is William Powell. I'm a lifelong <laughs> resident of South Lyon. My family's been here um, since the 40s. Um, I have been married for going on six years to my beautiful wife, Gina. Uh, we have two wonderful children, Layla, who's four, and Stella, who is one. Um, hi. <laughs> um, I uh, am also a graduate of South Line High School's class of 2001. Uh, when I graduated, I mainly got out into the workforce. I've been uh, working in various industries, um, but the one connecting point is I've been in management basically since I got out of high school. Um, running uh, people, processes, uh, looking at things critically, trying to figure out you know what is the best solution for any given company that I'm working for. Uh, currently, I head a union installation, uh, office furniture installation company. Um, and we have several very large accounts, like with GM, Ford, um, and uh, I work with anywhere up to 40 installers on a daily basis, you know, different personalities, trying to figure out exactly who needs what and why. Um, I'm very diverse in, you know, uh, operating effective meetings. We utilize the EOS methodology for running effective meetings. Um, basically figuring out what the problem is, what are the uh, possible solutions and what is the best outcome, um, leaving emotion aside, you know, really getting down to brass tacks and figuring out what we need and I think that's really going to help me um, help move the city forward. Uh, I really want to strengthen the communication link between uh, city government and the people. I feel sometimes it's a lot of um, people are required to ask the questions instead of the city kind of bringing the information to the citizens. So I think that needs to be uh, addressed as well. And I hope to do that if elected mayor. Thank you. Testing one, two, three. You never know with these things. <clears throat> Hi. Thanks for braving the cold out there. Okay, this is going to annoy you. Hi. If you notice my last name, Vizella, that's I'm Italian, so the voice carries. Hopefully you guys can all hear that. Um, before I tell you who I am, I'm going to tell you who I'm not. I'm not a politician. I'm just your average guy who uh, had a suggestion brought to him. I work for a medical clinic in town, and uh, the doctor that runs it is a family friend, and she suggested, hey, Ricky, there's an opening. Did you know about it? I think you'd be great for it. I said, no, I never thought about it, so I'll give it a try. Um, so I prayed about it, and I said, okay, um, let's do this. So I threw my hand in the ring. Who I am is, I'm a servant. I help. Um, for 17 years, I was in the military, and I was a uh, U.S. Naval Corpsman. I did that for eight years. Uh, I served ship, I served field, um, and sure, uh, Naval Hospital Great Lakes. Uh, when I got out immediately to that, I went into the Michigan Army National Guard here in Michigan, and I served as a senior medic and evac specialist and instructor trainer there. Well, you might say, well, why does that make me good for here? Well, because I think the skills that I have there of taking the least amount of resources and making the most of them for a positive outcome is what I want to do in South Lyon. I'm a longtime Michigan resident. I've got a, uh, my beautiful Angelus right here in the room with us. We've got seven children, actually, and one guinea pig. Um, I think this is a great community. Uh, I'm originally, originally a graduate from Brighton High School. Uh, I've been all over in the military, and for the last almost 10 years, I've been here in South Lyon. I think there's a lot of possibilities in this communion that aren't being utilized for everybody. And like you, I want to know why. So if you decide to pick me from all of these fabulous people and, you know, they all seem great to me, um, I would do my best to, like I did as Corman, find out the why. Find out where's the bleeding, what needs to stop, and what needs to change. That's just the bottom line of it. Because you could, you know, cast all the wishes that you want, but if you don't stop the bleeding, your patient doesn't tell it fair too well. So if you decide to go with me, that's that's what I want to do is I'm just part of you guys. I'm just an average Joe who wants to help out. I guess I'll try this thing. Hello, 
Okay. My name is Brandon Yap. Um, I've been in South Lyon since 2011. Um, I like to call myself a successful business owner. I have close to 40 plus employees. I moved my business from Livonia to Detroit um, before it was cool to be in Detroit with all the all, everything happening down there. And we've really expanded. So when it comes to getting lines of communication for money, for handling retirement, for handling pension funds, I've also had a background with that. I was also a trustee for the Teamsters for about six years. I was the youngest trustee to be ever appointed by the Teamsters at the age of 24. So when it comes to money and it comes to balancing and it comes to getting through red tape and getting stuff done, I think I can really help out this community. Not only do I have two little children here that are in first grade and in kindergarten, I want to keep the city going in the right direction. We have a great city. Everybody here knows we love our city. But at the same time, we're facing some challenges that we really need to get through. Um, and the other thing is that I, I'd like to say to everybody here is I think everybody has the same envision on what we want to do with the city. Um, all these candidates is a great thing that nobody really wants to steer us down the wrong direction. I think everybody has great, again, envisions for what they want to do with this city. Also, with that being said, I'm a people person. So I would have an open door policy. I want to be for the people. If the people put me as mayor, I want, to, I want to be able to serve for the people. So it's not only what city council says and what the mayors have done in the past and the people haven't heard about it and the closed door stuff that goes behind the scenes. I want to get done what's right for the people. So if the people want something done, they want something done with their parks, they want to stop with some of the roads or the railroad. I mean, we have the railroad crossings. We also have the crossings on the street where the kids let out at middle school and you have little kids coming everywhere and we don't have crossing guards. There's all little things that I've heard from just people in our community that can be easily fixed, easily done, and then also we can grow as one big community and maybe turn ourselves into community like some of the ones surrounding us. You have downtown Brighton has a phenomenal economic develop development area. You have Plymouth, you have Northville, you have Milford. You have all these cities around us that we in South Line can do. We're starting some stuff in the right direction, but we need to push farther. We need to bring in more business, and we need to be able to, be able to make money off those businesses and use it for the people. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, just hang on to the, the microphone. We'll start with you. With the, we're going to start with the pre-event questions that the, the, each candidate was provided. They get a minute for each candidate, or for, I'm sorry, for each question. If you in the audience still have cards, the young lady is coming around to get them. Um, Make sure they're all questions are directed so that all all candidates can answer them. So, Brandon, here's the first uh, pre-event question. No one takes on a new responsibility knowing all that you need to know to do the job. What will you do to learn how to become an effective mayor? To become an effective mayor, you need to work for the people. You need to listen to the people that voted for you and take advice from your city council and your other colleagues. If everybody is going back and forth and not agreeing on an issue or not working to figure out the right direction to fix an issue, you're not going to get anywhere. So, of course, everybody has a different opinion. The best thing to do as a mayor is to control that meeting and work through the red tape. Why is this person disagreeing versus this other council member disagreeing or the people disagreeing? You need to listen to the people and come to a solution and work through it. Thank you. I agree. And I'm going to take that one step further and to say um, opening lines of communication is critical. I mean, hello? <laughs> opening lines of communication is critical. So that's where I think we should start. I mean, honestly, how much do you guys know about the city? Honestly. I mean, I don't. That's why I decided to throw my hat in here, because I think communication has been non-existent. You know, there's things that you want to see out of that. I think you should. I think there should be um, an immediate open forum directly to the mayor's office or uh, city manager's office, where if you have a question or concern, maybe you can email that, and then it could be addressed. Not six months from now, but within that week, maybe within that day. So I think opening a line of communication to see everything that you guys want and then how we can effectively make that happen. Thank you. Let me, before we go, go on, remember our timer is going to give you a five second. So just 
when you're down to your last five seconds, she's going to warn you, and then you can draw to a close. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good. Um, as far as uh, gaining experience, um, I think or uh, becoming a better mayor, I think experience is the best teacher. Not necessarily my experience, but everybody has done this before me. Um, you know, we have the privilege I've met with, um, you know, Ted, uh, John, uh, the current mayor, uh, John, the former mayor, um, the city council, or I'm sorry, uh, the city manager, Lynn. Um, I sat with her for a while and just got, you know, and I want to get in further with them to figure out, you know, what went good, what went bad. Um, I think, uh, one of the biggest benefits that I've done so far is actually attending the city council meetings. Uh, it's it's shed light to what happens in those meetings and how things run. Um, as far as moving myself forward, uh, Lynn was nice enough to get me the um, Michigan Municipal League's uh, handbook for you know new people coming into this. Um, I know they have a seminar, so I hope to attend that. Um, and I just want to keep learning moving forward and, you know, not only be um, a, a more open to the community, but also become a better mayor and a more effective mayor and learn everything that I possibly can. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Bill. Yep. <coughs> I've... Hello. Test, test, one, two. I've sought out advice and general guidance from both current and former elected officials to help me better understand what will help me become an effective and well-rounded mayor. I have been studying, studying parliamentary procedure via Robert's Rules of Order to help understand the practice of efficiently running meetings. I plan to continue to seek advice in every aspect of the job from those that have come before me. Learning from those that have participated in the process is invaluable. I will continue to stop in and visit with city staff as often as possible to keep informed on the government side of what is happening and going on on the day-to-day -day basis in town. Most importantly, however, I will continue to talk to you as I have been throughout the campaign. <clears throat> the best elected officials are those that represent the people that put them in office. That principle will guide me through my tenure as mayor. All right. Um, can everyone hear me in the back if I talk at this volume? Okay, okay cool. Um, so in terms of becoming an effective mayor, I feel that the first step is, of course, learning about the roles and responsibilities. Um, I figured I would do this by first reading the city charter. Very important. It's the document that we actually use to govern ourselves. It's something that we should be very familiar with. I will, of course, then meet with the folks who run our city currently and in the past. It's important. And watching previous city council meetings is also important. Um, I've also been attending some recent city council meetings, but I'm planning to continue to watch more and more meetings in the past to see what council or what issues council has faced in the past. Um, if elected, I would of course set up transition meetings with um, our current mayor, Mayor Galis, um, each current and recent past elected member of city council, uh, Lynn, our city manager, Bob, our economic and downtown development director, and members of the various city commissions we have. Um, I would like to know what the current mayor does to enable them to do their jobs best and what they would like to see the next mayor do differently or better. Um, I've also been reading up on Robert's Rules of Order, as uh, um, Pelchev mentioned. It's very important uh, to understand that parliamentary procedure in order to be able to run those meetings efficiently and effectively. Um, I'm a people person. I'm a leader. And I will drive city council by running city council meetings effectively, using that parliamentary procedure, and making sure everyone works as a group to make this community a better place. Thanks. All right. I hope this doesn't go out because I've got a quiet voice and <laughs> you guys are out of luck if I can't use a microphone. All right, um, how will I learn? I've been learning since I put my hat in the ring. I immediately started studying. That's how I do it. If I need to learn how to do something, I try and learn as much as I possibly can, any type of outlet that I can. So I started listening to podcasts. I started Googling things. If I didn't know what a word meant as I was reading through the city charter, or if somebody said something in passing, because as soon as you say you're running for mayor, you get an earful. And so I made sure that I read up on the things that people were talking to me about. Um, um, like I said, I've listened to multiple different podcasts. Some of them gave me insight. Some of them I just learned some cool things. Um, but, you know, it's always good to be well-rounded. Um, 
I've Googled things, I've had meet and greets where um, I've just sat around for a couple hours and if people want to stop in and talk to me, I've gotten a lot of really good information. I've met some cool people there. Um, I have a social media account, so if people want to talk to me, I would love to learn from you what you want. I think that one thing that I won't do is necessarily learn a lot from the people that have been on council and that have been the mayor in the past. And the reason is because they kind of got us into the shape we're in right now, right? So um, that's, that's my plan. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the second question. Please remember to keep an eye on Megan. Yeah. Um, what do you consider the most pressing issues for South Lyon in the next year, the next five years, and the next ten years? Yes. Yep. All right. So um, for the next year, I think we need to work on our image. Um, we don't we don't have a great image within our community or outside of our community. You know, when our newspaper is publishing things that kind of say that the city council is a train wreck and that we're not getting along, that's not great. And when the city council is actually not getting along in meetings, also not good. So I think that we need to work on being positive and moving the city forward in a positive light and spreading the word that South Lyon is actually a fantastic place to live and raise a family and walk and live and enjoy yourself. Um, five years, I want to work on the downtown. We need to enhance it and bring more businesses in. In 2020, we got our eye on those liquor licenses because we're going to get some good restaurants in, right? And then the last one is um, infrastructure. So in the next 10 years, we need to be very diligent on making sure that with all these new people and traffic in our town, we need to work on the infrastructure. Um, so I think in the next year, we first need to address our city's budget and uh, the retirement plan situation. We need to make some change so that we don't continue to run a budget deficit each year. That scares me, and I don't think it's good for our city in the long run. Um, the current council has done a great job at least starting the discussion on the city's retirement plan, and I look forward to continuing this merged discussion and leading our council to make decisions on this matter. Um, in the next five years, I'd like us to become fiscally strong, develop volunteer park using grants, and continue to improve our downtown with the help of Bob Donahue. Um, I've already mentioned a little bit about those issues, so I won't go into that. Um, as uh, Kennison mentioned, we also need to plan for those infrastructure improvements. Um, I'd love to take a more regional approach with regards to those um, infrastructure improvements and work with surrounding communities um, to address the traffic issues that we've seen both inside of South Lyon and just outside the surrounding areas. Um, in the next 10 years, we need to implement those improvements that we started planning for um, and maintain our fiscal strength, the character of our city, and our revitalized downtown. I look forward to hearing from all of you as well on what you would like to see the um, city council and mayor focus on. Thanks. Within the next year, test, test, one, two. Within the next year, we need to be focused on working towards a revised solution to the city's pension deficit as well as working hand in hand with the Downtown Development Authority to develop and improve our downtown while maintaining that small town charm that we all love about South Lyon. In the medium term, we need to improve communication and collaboration with our surrounding communities in order to work together going forward, which includes preparing our infrastructure for growth that occurs both within and outside of our city. In the long term, we need to ensure consistent fiscal st stability, excuse me, and finding common ground to continue moving South Line forward. Additionally, we need to not lose sight of our long-term goals while working on short-term solutions or our short-term goals while working on long-term solutions. We need to make certain that all of our plans work in tandem to improve our hometown. Um, I feel the most pressing issue right now is figuring out the unfunded pension liability like everybody said. Um, also trying to find a solution for the hole that was left when Bob Martin left from the uh, city's water and sewer department. Um, those are some big shoes to fill and uh, that needs to get figured out. Uh, within five years, I think um, a lot of people that have been talking to me have said they would like to see a community center. Um, something. Try to figure out what we can do for the kids that 
are you know the above elementary school age, that middle middle school to high school. You know where can they go? Um, and then I think ten years and beyond, you're looking like they said the uh, degrading infrastructure that we have. Uh, we need to plan for that, but also the issue of um, a flatlining tax base. You know our city is getting pretty close to being built up, so where does that additional money come from when you know you're not building anymore? Um, and those kind of issues, but hopefully those will all be addressed. Thank you so much. Well, I have to say, this is getting annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's just annoying to you guys. All right. Well, I've got to say first, I agree with Kennison. Um, I I know Kennison. She is a great pillar of the community. Um, good man, takes care of herself and her. Thing. And we met one day because her graffiti uh, was on her uh, fence and getting vandalized. And I felt bad about it, so I took care of that. But I got to wonder, where, where is some of our patrols and police patrols? And so the first thing I would jump onto is that um, we lost three patrolmen and they haven't been replaced, and I want to know why. We also lost three patrol cars that haven't been replaced, and I want to know why. You know, the truth of the matter is, let's face it, you live in South Lyon, our tax base is, well, it's not that low. So that's millions and millions of dollars. I want to know where it's going. I want to know why those police officers haven't been replaced to take care of our, our city more. I mean, we need PD, we need fire, we need that. We, it's just an essential thing. Here in Valley Ambulance is there and they do a swell job. So does our fire and PD. And I've talked to the police chief and they're overworked. We need to change that. We need to change the infrastructure. We've got those millions of dollars. There was a major business who wanted to come to this town and put $2 million into our roads that could have made a nice boulevard in there. And our council shot it down. I want to know why. That business would have brought like 400, 450 jobs into this town and would have fixed our roads there. I want to know why the big trucks are allowed to drive however they want. I live right there. I live right above the creative hair. Dean is the greatest person. And I see this 24 hours a day when I'm there. They drive like maniacs. I agree with Kennison. What is our image? If you close your eyes and I say, hey, Franken, hey, Brighton, Northville, if I say Petoskey, you have an instant image. If I say South Lyon, I agree with her. What's our image? What do we want to be when we grow up? Those things need to change. We need a senior center for seniors to do something. And we need something that kids need to do to keep them out of trouble. Like Brighton's got a skate park. Richard, thank you. Two and a half minutes. All right, thank you. OK, I agree with a lot of everybody saying up here. Um, in the first year, and the first year, what we're going to do, or what I would do if you guys elect me mayor, is I will go after, it's called MERS. It's, it's uh, Municipal Employee Retirement Services. That is what our police and fire and public safety are underneath. Just like Plymouth, just like Westland. When I, was, when I worked for the Teamsters, I literally worked. We held stuff through Westland. I, I, I worked with those police officers and the POM left uh, side by side. So we all pay into this pension fund out of our taxes. It also goes through the state. So the way to get through that is not going to happen overnight. I will tackle it in the first year. I will call out to Lansing with people I have dealt with in the past, and I will get this funded. We do not need to lose any of our first responders. If anybody has a heart attack, you have three minutes till you get a first responder there. We are using Huron Valley, who is also right now servicing us, Milford, Wixom, and Lyon Township with two ambulances. That is unacceptable with the amount of taxes that we pay in this city. So we need to have somebody here fast. If my kid gets hit by a car or something happens or somebody breaks their leg, we need our first responders. First responders are the most important thing to our community. So in the first year, I will continue to fund those first responders, make, make headway with MERS, call out to Lansing, deal with people in the pension funds that I've dealt with in the past have been successful. And that's the first thing I'm going to do in the first year, because that doesn't happen overnight. You need to get through that and make sure that our community stays safe. We are one of the safest communities in this state, and I want to keep it that way. So that's what we're going to have to do in the first year. I would like to say, going to infrastructure and stuff like that, yeah, it does not happen in the first year. The state owns the majority of these roads. So just as us as a city council, we need to get out to Lansing with our small community and make headway. 
because just us shooting an email or saying something through a telephone is not going to get nothing done because they're going to keep building in this township and these builders are going to keep putting up huge homes left and right without widening any of the roads that makes it hard for people to come in and out of our community. So we need to, A, back our first responders, get our pension fund straightened out and funded because we are under budget by a little over a million dollars, guys. I know that sounds like a big number, but it can be fixed within a two to three year plan. So in the first year, I would start making headway with Lansing, people I've dealt with in the past for MERS, to make sure that all of our first responders and city employees, that our parks are cut, that our streets are maintained, and that everything is safe in our community. That's what I would try to do in the first year. Thank you. The third question. Uh, effective communication is vital for local government. What will be your specific guidelines as you develop your lines of communication with city staff, city council, and members of the community? Well, the first thing, the first thing I, I'm just going to put this thing away. The first thing I would do is I would have an open door policy. Regardless of what this person thinks about this city council member, what this person thinks about if I was mayor or past mayors or this neighbor to this business, it's an open door policy. You come in, I will hear you out. And I will take that to our city council and, and, and we, will, we will tackle it. We will go, okay, we've had 30 people come in with this same issue. Why can we not figure this out? We need to give these people an answer. We need to give them a correct answer because they put us here and they pay taxes too. So the first thing I would do is have an open door policy. That's the only way you can be effective and serve the people. Because right now, whoever is a mayor or city council, we are put here to serve you. Good job. Thank you. I couldn't say it any better. I actually, we agree with them. And going on what I talked about earlier, open door is the best. And you know, for some people who can't maybe come right in and come to council meetings, I think you guys should be able to come to every meeting that you want to come to. Because you elect us, you elect them. And my old high school uh, American government uh, teacher, Mr. Dubuck, used to say, you know, it's a democratic republic. Like, might not always be fair, but we do have rights. And you guys have a right to come into the com uh, council rooms and voice your opinions. You have a right um, to have an open door, and I would, I would do that. Uh, I would go so far as to have on our website, a more effective website that lets you get immediate uh, questions in for those of you, maybe you can't get out, maybe you're sick, maybe you don't have a car. I think that should be there for you, um, those lines of communications. And then if you have a problem, you should be able to voice it immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to work to get city council meetings filled with more of the citizens. Uh, I've been attending the last um, probably three, four months worth, and it's been shocking, you know, in a city of 12,000 voters, there's maybe five people in there, and uh, I, I don't know, I just want to get more of the citizens active in uh, city government, just understanding how everything works, how it, uh, how process happens. Um, I think what the uh, Southland Police Department did with um, their Facebook page in listing the statistics, you know, what they do each week, I think that's a great thing. It's, it's more of the city informing the citizens instead of the citizens having to inform themselves of what the city's doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I also like that the every meeting is recorded. Um, but I, I just think the education of city council and the mayor um, with the citizens is what I really hope to um, make stronger. I feel as though this ties in with the first question to a certain degree. I'm a big proponent of accessibility and open lines of communication. As I mentioned earlier, local government operates best as a representative of its residents and any government was designed to do. If those who are in office don't have an ear to the ground, how can they know how to write policy that benefits the general population? They can't. I plan to continue talking to the folks on their doorstep, at their offices, and wherever I am needed to hear people out and understand the everyday problems facing our neighbors. Lastly, I will do my part to encourage healthy debate on the council while maintaining the civil discourse that our community deserves. I feel that this is one of the most important factors in keeping South Lyon going in the right direction. Thank you. 
Um, so I plan to sit down with the city manager and discuss issues that are important to her in performing her job and delivering services to the community. I also plan to visit all of the departments, DPW, water, administrative staff, police and fire, everybody, and listen to the employees' concerns and their suggestions for improvement. Um, I'm going to attend commission meetings of Parks and Rec, Cable, <coughs> Cultural Arts, Planning, and Historical Commissions and meet with those commission members to see what I can do to improve communications between the city and those commissions. Um, I also will, of course, continue to attend community events and, as many have mentioned, hold some open door time. Um, for members of the community, it's really important for them to be able to have access to their city councilmen and their mayors to be able to bring issues to them. And while they might be able to bring those issues to um, city council, some people might not feel comfortable standing up during public comment during that to share their opinions. So I would love to have some open door hours for people to bring their problems in. Um, sometimes the best communication is just in is just taking the time to listen to what folks are saying. People want to be heard. They want to be believed in, recognized for their service. I believe in the city, its employees, its elected officials, its volunteers, and of course its residents. And they all have valuable information and great insight into how we can become an even better community. Thanks. So, um, communication. I have a, I'm part of a team that sits in Ann Arbor, India, UK, Peru, Brazil. So trying to get everybody in a meeting is tough. And we've figured out that we can use a bunch of different um, versions of communication. And we get along all right. Um, I plan to kind of fall back on whatever the precedent is for communication right now. I know that in the city charter, um, it says that if you, um, after a city council meeting, any decision needs to be publicized in the newspaper, I think that's a very effective way of communicating to the citizens. I think that um, whatever the precedent for the current city council um, with the city, that's probably what I would fall back on because that's what everybody's used to and comfortable with. Thank you. We're going to start with the audience questions now. If you st still have cards, signal to Shelby and she'll get them for you. You have one minute each for each one of these. The 2017 budget was $3.4 million. A proposed budget for 2018 was $3.8 million. Do you think it is okay to increase the expenditures by $400,000 per year? You know, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess we need to make sure that our expenditures are going to be covered by our revenue, which, as Ashley has mentioned a couple times, is flatlined. So we need to we need to come up with some good solutions for either increasing our revenue or we need to take a really close look at the expenses and start cutting them. It's business, and this is not unique to South Lyon. So this is something that we need to pay close attention to, and it's something that I'm good at. Thanks. I completely agree. Um, we really should not be spending more money than we're taking in unless we have you know, the funds set aside for a project that we've been planning for for years and have been setting aside money for for years. Given our flat, uh, flatline tax revenue, we either need to find other ways to, to bring more funds into the city, such as applying for local and national grants uh, to be able to fund projects like um, road improvements and um, improving parks, um, or we need to take a very close look at our budget and make some cuts. We need to be taking in as much money as we are spending. Thanks. Thank you. This is it. Test us. Test. Come on. Okay. This is a, this is a tough question. Um, while I have been out speaking with the citizens of this city, um, they are not looking to lose any sort of the city services that we get uh, in this great small town. And no, you cannot operate in the red continuously and be, a, you know, continuing in a good way. So we need to work with the DDA and expand this tax base outside just residential and try and get some more money in here. So, or we need to consider making some very difficult cuts at some of our very great city services, which would be very unfortunate. And I know uh, that would not sit well with many of our residents who are also, many of those residents are senior citizens 
uh, who are working on a fixed income. So raising taxes to accommodate this spending is not uh, a great answer either. So that's the way we will have to address this, either making cuts or bringing in more money. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I agree with everybody. The, um, you know, the fact that we went up is just on paper without having any of the facts. It looks bad when, you know, you're said that you're spending more than you're taking in. Um, but there was cuts made and, you know, a big issue with the pension liability just had to happen. That was in turn when the economy went bad. Um, that's slowly been building back up. So it, it is going in the right direction. You know, I know city council's made um, a lot of hard decisions um, this upcoming budget year. They have cut quite a bit of stuff. Um, so it, it's kind of a, it's kind of hard to say, but you know, as revenues goes up, as home values go up, the tax base goes up as well. So um, that 0.4 mil, you know, a, a spread out over the tax base, is it? you know, that much of an increase, is it basically as it goes up, you know, it, it's very hard to say, but I think, uh, I think it's all right right now. Yeah, I'm not going to use this. My immediate answer, no. Absolutely no. And here's why. Because I want to know, why can't you work with what you got coming in? We talked about this once before. We have millions and millions of dollars coming in. What's the problem? Where's the bleed? Why, you know, you got, you got to stop the bleed. Why can't you work with what, you, what you've got? What is the reason? Because if you don't find out what that reason is, you can't save your patient. You're just throwing good money after bad money. What's the reason? If you need 400000 for our in infrastructure or for our first responders, sure, okay, then let's find a good way that we can get that, okay? Because if you don't, it's just like you're ringing, you're ringing, you're ringing, you're ringing. You guys are going to hit a breaking point. We're going to hit a breaking point because we live here. We pay taxes just like you do. So my immediate thing, no. I want to know where it's coming from, then let's go from there. Thank you. Seventh floor? Okay. So, um, I agree with what he says. I disagree with what everybody else has said. Uh, making cuts? No. Um, are we overspending with money that we don't have? Numbers don't lie. If we are spending money that we don't have, we are going to be heading down a wrong road. So what I've done in the past is you guys had, I, I brought up MERS, I brought up the city pension fund. The way we can do that is the city, MERS itself across the state is underfunded. It's paying out four or five to one for one retirement. So all these new hires that we have coming in, let's put them in a constructive 401k. Let's put them in a 401k. Let's let them pay into that. We can maybe match 3% on that tax-free for the city. So now we're not getting taxed on other dollars that we're using. And we can put these kids into a 401k and these young adults. So when they go to retire, they're actually going to have something they can collect. Because right now that we're paying in on our young police officers that are in their mid-20s to mid-30s, when they go to retire, there's a good chance for that retirement, that pension fund that they're going to have, is going to be cut in half or not even be there and just be backed up by 20000 You expect to have forty to 50000 to live on for the rest of your life, and bam, they come at you when you're 60 or maybe even 70, you can't find a job somewhere else making the money you're making, and now you're going to get $20,000 a year. That's the path we're going down, guys. Mm -hmm. It's not me up here saying this is how it is. This is exactly how it is, and we're going down a road, and people don't want to believe it. These young guys, you put them in a 401k to where, hey, it's good. They've had some years in it. We give them a buyout option. We start paying in the 401k. We're not getting taxed by the underfunded state pension fund that we're all tied into with all the local communities around us. You put these guys in a 401k, and I guarantee you right there, it's going to cut us almost half of the bleeding. Now, when we get into office and we come down and we look at what else is going on, yeah, of course, we're going to go, why are we spending extra money over here to DPD? Why are our, our, our uh, Detroit Public Water, DPW? Why, why are we spending this to the state when they're not even, they're taxing us to plow our own roads? We in the city know that the city plows our roads. Why are we paying for the county to come through and so when we're doing it ourselves? There's all kinds of little things that are bleeded and leakage, which oh, it's only a couple hundred bucks here, it's only a couple thousand here. As we all know, numbers add up, guys. If we could come in and tighten that down and get these guys worked into a retirement fund that they're actually going to have when they go to retire, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to fix that out for them. Thank you. Please remember the, the one minute time limit. Um, just as a note to the audience, a lot of these questions are similar, so they, 
not all of them, you know, not all of them may get asked. Um, everyone has a very busy career. How much time will you be able to devote to the job of mayor? Well, the good answer to that is I own my own business. So I have partners now, so I'm actually able to, I have built my business up to where it's at, to where I, I don't have to do my nine to five. I don't have to leave the house at a certain time. I can structure my, my schedule around what the city needs to get done, where I live, where I'm gonna raise my children. So when it comes to that, I don't have the nine to five like a lot of other people on this stage. I make my own schedule, and my schedule will be going putting this city first. I'm really similar. Um, I make my own schedule. The <coughs> clinic that I work for, um, I, I can pretty much tailor my schedule. Um, our family, um, we have our own business too also, so I can tailor for the needs here, um, whatever the priority is, um, wherever the help needs to be. Um, that said, wouldn't be only my own, because if I was here, it would just be me going in and doing it. It would be me getting however help we needed to do for it. You know, many hands need light work. Uh, as far as I go, um, I work for a great company that's allowed me the flexibility to m develop my hours. I work 5 a.m. till 2.30 p.m. every single day, five days a week. Um, outside of that, you know, I, I, whatever the mayoral task um, has is what it is you know there there's going to be parts I know it's I know it's going to be rough I know you know I have two small children and they are more excited than anything and they're probably the most understanding of it all um, I, I think I'm more than able to fulfill the role that mayor encompasses I'll go ahead and give that a shot <laughs> <laughs> Test, test, one, two, two. <coughs> um, having worked for the South Line Community School District for over 15 years, um, the flexibility will be there. If there is an emergency that, that the mayor is needed at City Hall, I, I work in that building three to four times a week anyways because it also shares a building with our school administration team. Um, I have a very strong uh, line of communication with the people in that building. And uh, outside of the regular off office hours, I think the mayor's position is what you make it. So how much time are you willing to commit to it? Um, as when I got involved with the cable commission to get this, the television station back up, if it's something you love, it really isn't work. So you just, you continuously will continue to put time into it. And that's exactly the way I would approach this. Um, I would not allow it to affect my day job, but as many hours that are needed to be involved to get the job done would be committed to that job. Thank you. All right. So I have a um, I have the great fortune of working for a company that allows me to have an extremely flexible work schedule. I do end up working about 40 hours a week, but some of those days are work from home days. Others are nine to five days. Others are, you know, the, the five to two type days. It's kind of what I want, which is great. So that way, you know, if there is an event that the mayor is needed at or a meeting that the mayor is needed at, I can make the time to be there, no matter what time of day or night it is. Um, I'm also kind of lucky at this point in my life that I don't yet have children. Um, I know kids are a big responsibility and they take a lot of time to care for. And I'm, you know, give me like 10 more years and then I'll be ready to take on that time commitment. But because of that, <laughs> I do have the time to really dedicate to this role. Thanks. Maybe you should also teach everybody else how to use the microphone. It's the word for me. All right. All right. I'm going to try it out too. Um, so as far as as far as the time that I can spend, I work. I've got a full-time job, and I'm a mom. I've got two kids, um, one who's in fourth grade and one who's in kindergarten. So I've got a lot of stuff there, but that means that I am pretty fabulous at multitasking. I know how to prioritize, and I know when I have time to spend on things. Right, so. What I have been doing is having meet and greets, and I promise you that I'll continue to have meet and greets, but what I want to know from you is how much time you can commit to me. How much time can you commit to making this city better? Because I can't do it alone, and the city council can't do it alone. If I don't know what your voice is, then I can't serve you. 
Thank you. This next question has to do with nobody showing up on the actual ballot. Uh, many candidates have not even filed a committee to run for mayor. If you're unable to comply with something the law requires, how can we be sure you'll be able to learn on the fly and follow the rule of law as mayor? That's a good one. I've actually had that question asked a, a lot. So the reason that none of us actually, because we've talked about it. I mean, every single one of us have pretty much talked about it, except for Brandon, because I just met him today. But he seems great, and I bet he has the same situation. We had no idea that the position of mayor was up for grabs, right? So um, we thought the current mayor was going to be running. We thought if we ran against him, he'd get it. So, I mean, why, right? So when we found out he wasn't, I think all of us stepped up and we said, this is an important role. This is a big deal, and it goes back to image again, right? We want South Lion to be a place that we can be proud of. That's why I'm doing it. I want to make sure that this city is a great place still for my kids to continue to live in because they love this town. This is theirs, and I want to make sure to protect it for them. I think Kennison did a great job explaining you know, why there was no one on the ballot in the first place. Um, I, however, have filed my statement of organization. I've actually recently filed my pre-election statement as well. Um, I think it is a really important thing to do to follow you know, state, county, local laws with regards to filing election paperwork. Um, I've done my research. I'm doing my best to do it right. And, you know, given that I've been able to, I think, follow the rules up till this point, I should be able to do my research on the job and keep following the rules for our community. In regards to why I, uh, I did not get involved in this race before we found out the deadline was, and I, I would say I, Kennison was right on, that John Galeas had been doing a great job and um, with me being involved in the Cable Commission and knowing that we still had some work to do to try and get uh, online streaming for our, our friends that don't have WOW Cable um, and stuff like that to try and improve that, I was not looking to run at this time. when. The opportunity presented itself, um, it was a no-brainer. Um, luckily enough, I was there to pick up a dog license that day and found out early that morning what was happening. And uh, it was without question that I took the paperwork. Um, as far as the commissions go with the county, uh, that's one that I actually am, am good on too. Um, part of that is talking with people that have been here before and done this. Um, you want to cross your T's and dot your I's and to make sure that you got your paperwork filed with Oakland County, that would probably be a good place to start after getting your paperwork filed with the city. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, the, you know, the, the opening for mayor was uh, a blurb in the Herald, like I say. It's just a small little thing and it goes back to communication for me. You know, it, it's it's one little section until all of Southeast Michigan hears that no one's running for mayor of, of this town. You know, and it, it looks bad, but it, those of us that live there, we know what it's like. It's not a bad city. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that happen, and I, I, I really do, I care for the city more than I can even express. I've, I've lived here my whole life, and I, I wanna see everything grow. Um, you know, as far as the, you know, doing the correct paperwork for uh, write-in and everything, you know, I, I haven't spent any virtually money on doing anything since it's a write-in candidacy. Um, it's just basically me talking to you guys and reaching out in social media and trying to figure out what your guys' issues are. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, I've got to echo the sentiments there, and not just to parrot it, but just to say, you know, um, I spoke with uh, Kennison on our Pumpkin Fest day, and I was like, oh, hey, Kennison, you're running. Oh, hey, I'm running, too. You know, it was kind of funny. I'm running by, and oh, hey, Ricky, how you doing? We're running. <laughs> when I was in the Navy and I was a corpsman, what you do if there's a problem, you just step up. You don't think, you just step up and go. Every one of us here did that. And it could be any of you. Any of you could have just done it, you know. 
you know, the doctor that I worked for said, hey, Ricky, you'd be good for that. Why don't you do it? So I just stepped up and did it. If there's legal things to do to take care of it, you know, in the interim with all of this, rest assured I'll do that. Um, but my first thing was like, like my fellow citizens here, just let's step up and, and do something. Uh, the reason I'm running for mayor is because uh, I'm a leader, and I and I saw the opportunity, and I took it, and, and I took a shot at it. Um, I didn't know that the, the last mayor was going to resign and, and not run again, so I took the opportunity, and I said, "Hey, you know, this is where I live. This is where I want to raise my family. This is where I want to continue to get this city going." And as throwing my head in the race, I started looking at some other things, and I said, "Oh my goodness!" I go, "If we keep heading down the road that we're going, guys, we're going to be in a rude awakening 30 to 40 years from now." At, 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 the, at the latest. And with that now being said and being seen, it's, uh, I, I want to fix that. I, wa I want to continue to make this community uh, stay great and if not even be greater. And um, I'm a leader and I think I could be very well for this job and I, and, and I would listen to the people and I would do what you guys want me to do. Thank you. Let's pause for a second. Can you people in the back hear them without the microphone? The microphone isn't working all that well. If you guys can do your best to project back to the, so the folks back there can hear that. I would recommend great. if the microphone cuts out, just keep talking. It will pick up. Okay. Next question. How many council meetings have you attended? I have attended zero council meetings. I've watched a lot of them on TV, and if I am elected mayor, I would like to come in with an open mind instead of just sitting there in the audience hearing what people have to say back and forth. I have talked to some of the city officials and sat down one-on-one -on -one with them to hear their issues, but as it comes to city council actually going to the actual meetings themselves in person, I've attended zero. I'm gonna echo the same thing, absolutely zero. Um, I know the former, uh, former mayor, John, and I've talked to him personally um, about his um, positive and negatives of the position. Um, I know some other city council people um, and other chamber people and I've talked to them and I've gotten their opinions of everything. And honestly, I wanted to come into this fresh also. I didn't want anything to be tainted up here so I just could stay focused on what the task is up here. Um, uh, since filing for write in, I've attended every single city council meeting. I've had to leave early a couple times. Um, I've also gone back through the tapes and tried to see, you know, where where the hiccups are, um, and where we can go forward. <clears throat> test test. I also, since filing, have not missed a uh, city council meeting. I also was at them quite often as being a member of the cable commission. It's so important to be there and know what's going on and what has put us in the situation that we're in. Um, this is as much as I appreciate everyone catching up on the videos and whatever afterwards. Um, this is not a customized schedule that you just come and go to get caught up on the city council meetings. That whenever it's convenient for you, uh, they're at seven thirty on Mondays every second and fourth uh, week of the month. And so I think it's extremely important that you're there to understand uh, what's what's happening. And and you know you can't just pick this up after election day. That would be what I have to say about it. Um, since filing, I think I've missed two or three meetings, but I've been in attendance of the rest, and the ones that I did have to miss due to work conflicts that were pre-scheduled months ago, unfortunately, I did immediately watch the, the video the following day. Um, I do think it's really important to be kind of in the know of what the council's been working on, and since it's not a completely fresh council, there will be mem members continuing on those topics are going to be continued, and it's important to be up to date on kind of what's been going on and where we're at right now. Um, thanks. So I've been to a few meetings, and I've watched a few online. Um, I do want to share a story about the first meeting I went to. I sat next to these ladies. I was nervous because I had to um, announce that I was running for mayor, and these two ladies were sitting next to me. and. I just, I feel like they were put there for a reason because they were so sweet and they were so funny. But as the city council started talking about things and they'd go, you know, person to person and a couple people would start talking, they'd start elbowing me being like, here we go. 
we got this person's going to be talking now. And they had a running commentary through the whole meeting. It was almost like they were watching a sitcom, which, I mean, it's hilarious. If it wasn't our city, right? We don't want this. We want to have a very professional, positive dialogue in there. So let's work on that, okay? How do you plan to fix the city budget? And do you understand what the mayor's role is? So me, myself, I'm not going to fix the budget, <laughs> right? Um, it takes a team. I work for a company that we have hundreds of people working on a budget. Our finance department right now I think is like 15 people and that's small and those 15 people work with every individual um, program in order to get their budget, their expenditures and their revenue sorted out so that they understand um, what, is, what to be looking forward to in the coming year. That is not the mayor's role. The mayor's role is not to balance the budget. The mayor's role is to help listen to the city, listen to what people want, and help you understand what our budget means to you, and help you tell us what decisions you need made on your behalf. So part of this question involved kind of, do we understand what the role of the mayor is? And I like to think of the mayor as the CEO of the city. I believe that's actually the way the city charter describes it. Um, the city manager is then our CAO, the chief administrative officer. Um, the um, city manager kind of manages the day-to-day -day business um, of the city, and the city council kind of acts as more of a legislative body, um, determining policy, approving contracts, and kind of representing the needs of our residents, of course. Um, with regards to the budget, I think the city, the city council approval is needed to pass the budget. So really, we are, you know, as the person leading that meeting, in charge of making sure that, you know, if the policy we want is to pass a balanced budget, that we don't pass a balanced budget, and we pass it back to the city manager with suggestions for, well, we could either increase revenue this way or decrease, you know, our expenditures this way. We can provide that input as problem solvers who represent the residents, because we really want to put policies in place that kind of help you out the best. Thanks. Can I hear the question again? How do you plan to fix the city's budget, and do you understand what the mayor's role is? Well, the mayor will not be fixing the city's budget, but I want to give a lot of credit to the city council over the past six to eight weeks. This is something that they've made a very big priority and have been working on every meeting um, alongside with um, the DDA and the downtown uh, authority. It's the first and second thing every meeting and as mayor you're here to basically help these meetings move along efficiently and try and get everyone to work together uh, as in a you know yes healthy debate is great but at the end of the day you're not going to uh, make this decision on your own to make the to correct the budget you're going to need to work with people we're going to need to talk to the city's employees and, and what it is our citizens want from the city government and services to find out where can we juggle some things to make this work where we're back in the black. This is not something that's left in the hands of the mayor by him or herself. Yeah, I agree with that exactly. The, um, you know, the, the mayor and city council are like the gatekeepers. You know, we, we have the authority if elected you know, to approve the budgets, um, you know, but like, like was said, it's a balancing act. You know, you've got taxes, you've got expenditures. Where, where is that tipping point? Where do you cut services and where do you, you know, raise taxes? And, and I, I've heard it from everybody, you know, they, they are taxed out the nose and it is something that it's being addressed. It is. Uh, you guys, if you go to the city council meetings, watch them, you know, that's, it's beat down, you know, that we need to figure this out and, you know, hard decisions need to be made of what we need to do. Um, and I think it is moving towards figuring out where we go from here, you know, um, what to spend money on, where we need to cut and, you know, where to pass mills and that kind of thing. Well, 
I think that um, keeping the lines of communication open and as mayor, um, being in touch with the community and downtown businesses. That said, I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of the businesses here and I've heard their um, dismay uh, going towards some of the council and how they felt that um, though the council's been working arduously to try to balance the budget, um, there seems to be a little headbutting between the businesses and the council. So as mayor, I think he or she is like the goalie in hockey, you know, keeping everything in play, trying to keep things running smoothly, and if they're not running smoothly, bringing up the question as to why. As far as the budget, that's not part of the mayor's position to fix that, but it is a part of the team who handles that with the city to fix that, and I would start with a review on there to um, find out why isn't it, or where do we need to go to be more effective? So everybody said here, it's not the mayor's job. It's technically not the mayor's job to fix the city's budget. That is correct. But the mayor doesn't always have to do strictly what he's supposed to do. Uh, this is your job. You're to control the meeting. The mayor can go out and reach out to resources and say, hey, city council, check these guys out. They're financial advisors. They're from this firm. They're from this firm. They're from this firm. And come in and hear them out. Because financial advisors will come sit down with anybody, anywhere, at any time. That's what they do for a living. That's how they make their dollar. If we can tell some of the city council, hey, talk to this, talk, talk to Northwestern Mutual. We have a friend in Ann Arbor. Talk to them. Have them come in and see some of the options that they can put out there to maybe fix the bleeding of the budget. At the same time, have an open door policy. Work alongside by side with the colleagues. Control the meeting. And basically, get to down to the bottom of why you have certain members disagree and figure out a good a good outcome to make sure everybody's on the same page thank you excuse me any ideas to alleviate traffic in south line oh man i wish <laughs> like i said earlier everybody can say what they want but the state owns the roads so the only way to get to that is take our small community and let us be heard in lansing which I have resources in Lansing. I know people in Lansing. We can, I don't say it's gonna happen overnight. It probably won't happen in one or two years. But if we can start knocking on that door and they open it and at least hear us out, we can maybe work from there. Maybe put a crosswalk over for the kids, you know, coming out of the, out of the, out of the middle schools. Work something that in there. Maybe put some cross guards out there. I know it doesn't help with the traffic, but it saves lives. I agree with that. It's not our roads. They belong to the county and they belong to the state. However, it's our community. We live here. We work here. Our children are here. So they need to hear our voice. Um, I think starting with our PD, I think putting up a sign that says, hey, we ticket. So if you can't drive the speed limit, guess what? You're getting a ticket. No exceptions. I think a great idea would be to put a roundabout down at 11 and Pontiac Trail. I'd stick around about down by 9 in Pontiac Trail just to slow stuff down. I mean, look, there's commerce, and the big trucks are going to be coming through here, and we need it for some of our stores. But right now, I think some of the big thing with the traffic is personal responsibility and accountability. Look, there's just as many people that go through here as a bedroom community and speed. I know people who've been hit down by 9 in Pontiac. You know, and it's like, where are we all going? Why are we in a hurry? I'd start by slowing people down. I think the Downtown Development Authority uh, in issuing the truck route has been a big step forward. Um, you know, the police, I think it was last week, Monday, really started cracking down on all the trucks trying to turn here at uh, 10 Mile and Pontiac Trail. So hopefully that'll alleviate some of that congestion. Um, the other issue, like, has said before, you know, it, it is the state and the county. Um, it would be nice, you know, if there were more uh, north and south paved roads. Um, I think, you know, paving uh, Griswold was a, a good step in alleviating some of the traffic. Um, but, you know, we're really kind of limited with how close the buildings are. And, you know, I think another good step would be, you know, to, to reach out to Lyon Township, you know, find 
kind of work with them because as a lot of people have expressed to me, you know, their growth is kind of part of our pain, um, making it so busy downtown. This is a, a great question because many of the people that I've spoken to throughout the city brought up traffic as a main problem. And part of the issue that makes this a unique problem for our city is that we're surrounded basically by three different counties as well. So to get the ball rolling on something like this, we're going to need to work on our communications with people at Washtenaw, with people at Livingston, with people in Oakland, and also Lyon Township in Green Oak. And then, then we got to take it to the, to the next level in Lansing. So it's, it's not that we would pass the buck on this. You just you have to get the ball rolling locally get other people involved, and, and I think we could do this. I, you know, we're not gonna speak in hypotheticals up here. I'm pretty sure that there's um, you know, a little bit of a schedule to try and help alleviate this issue, to try and dissipate some of the traffic from the main quarter in downtown, but I would need to look at, at the schedule of that on, in the Oakland County Road Commissions and stuff. But we are aware of the problem, and, and, and it should definitely be on the agenda going forward. Yep, just wanna mostly echo what's been discussed so far. I mean, yeah, the traffic is not great. And talking to a lot of the residents, there are a lot of complaints about the traffic. There's a lot of people focusing, well, what are you going to do to stop the building out of suburbs because it's making our roads so crowded? Well, unfortunately, those suburbs aren't being built in South Line. They're being built in Line Township and surrounding communities. So we really need to do work, or we really need to work with these surrounding communities to kind of slow, slow down um, the building, or at least get some funding out of that building to help improve our infrastructure and the communities around us infrastructure. We're going to have to work with Oakland County. We're going to have to work with Washtenaw County. We're going to have to work with surrounding communities in order to get these roads in a state where we're not running into traffic issues. I know a lot of people that drive down Pontiac Trail towards Ann Arbor every day. I'm one of them. Those stop signs get really backed up. If there was anything we could do to fix that, I would love to. And I think doing that is going to involve talking to these communities and working with them. Thanks. Everybody said it, right? We need teamwork. We need to talk to, we need to talk to Washington. We need to talk to the township, of course. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys are on any of the Self Lion websites, or if you frequent any of those, the Self Lion, what's happening in the area issues websites. But I go on those a lot, and I've noticed a trend lately of people talking about where they wish we would do something. Where we wish we would have another light, or where we wish we would have a roundabout so that we could alleviate some of the traffic. And they're good. I mean, I, I wish that there was some sort of a release valve so that we could get the traffic through a little bit faster because my drive to work is excruciating in the morning. That's why I listen to a lot of podcasts, by the way. <laughs> but. Um, I think that we'd be foolish if we didn't do studies to figure out what the plan is. We have our master plan, right? Figure out what the plan is for the next five, ten years, and then figure out traffic patterns and what's going to be the best benefit for South Lyon. This is not something that we can do overnight. Just put in a traffic light and it'll fix it. Thank you. As mayor, what is your most important responsibility? So the question was, as mayor, what's my most res uh, important responsibility? I would say listening, making sure that the voices of you and everybody else in the community are heard, and that we're making decisions as a city council on behalf of the people of South Lyon. Of course, listening to the residents is extremely important, and we want to hear what you have to say, what your concerns are, what you feel the issues in South Line that you want addressed are. Um, but for me, I feel the biggest responsibility as the mayor is, well, running those meetings effectively, efficiently, and getting the information out from those meetings and to the, to the public, and really just making sure those meetings run well so that way we can be productive as a team um, with the city council to be able to move the city forward. I agree, and I think 
I think this will be something that you hear all the way down the table here is uh, you got to listen to your constituents that got you here and um, running meetings with some sort of, of smoothness in a, a team trying to get a team to work together for the for the positive good of, of the city of South Line is 1A and 1B. Um, outside of that, I think the mayor is, the seat is what you make of it too, like I said earlier, is, you know, reaching out to people to get their their input and, and information that they may have feedback on some maybe important issues around here where they maybe aren't informed. It would be another thing that I think is important is doing your due diligence to get the information out to the people so you can hear what their response would be. Yeah, that's, you know, that is it. Uh, it's running the city council meetings. It's being effective with the citizens and everything. But it's also being, you know, the, the pseudo image of the town. You know, being out there with you guys, um, you know, creating a positive and casting a positive light on what was deemed a dark area, you know, not, not four months ago. Um, you know, being trying to get the community back to, you know, when I was younger, it was nobody locked their house, nobody locked their cars. We all feel safe. We all knew each other. And even though the town has grown, um, I, I really do feel like we're still a small, close-knit community that just needs to reach out to each other and just introduce each other, you know, and, and be that positive role in the town. This is a very good question. Thank you, whoever asked that. My first responsibility, like yours, is to my family. As a mayor, it's to your families. This is a town of families. This is not Ann Arbor. This is not Detroit or some of the big ones. This is a family town. And it goes to not only safety, but it goes to downtown walking around it goes to um, our community what are we doing in our community do the kids have somewhere to, to go and do like maybe a skate park or artistic center our, our seniors you know our, our seniors don't get treated that well in most communities they don't you know and I'm I'm 54 I'm gonna you know I'm I'm right there with y'all and you know and um, why don't we have a senior center where we can do stuff? I'm a veteran, and there's other veterans. Why don't we have in that senior center places where veterans can do stuff? I want to know why. So my responsibility is to start with families, mine and yours. My first responsibility is to, is to work for the people, to get done what you guys want done. The, the things that you find are the biggest problems in our community that I can try to relay and get city council to work together and control those meetings to get those things done for the people. At the other, at the other note of that is the mayor is also is technically kind of like a face of the community. So with that being said, is to bring in more resources, bring in more networking with other local communities and other other local mayors, and talk to them and see what's working in their communities that we could possibly bring to our communities and get it going in the right direction, or keep it going in the right direction, I should say. Thank you. People often, you know, people often refer to South Lyon as a, quote, small town or a small city, yet South Lyon has 12,500 people within four square miles. This makes the city larger than Plymouth, Northville, and the same population as the city of Farmington. We have 3,300 people per square mile. What is your vision for our city moving forward as we transition from rural to suburban? Well, I love this question because I would like to make our city just like Plymouth, Northville, Brighton, and also bring those businesses in so we are able to have more things to go out and eat as a family or to go see new things and do things as a family and have more resources in our community that we can also make tax dollars off of. I mean, if you look at the other surrounding communities, they have beautiful downtown areas. We have a beautiful downtown area, but we can obviously grow our area into a Northville, Brighton, or Plymouth. Yes, we have a lot of people living in a small area, and it's, it's very important. I think that we should keep that small town image 
and work up the charm on it. That's our image. That's what we all are up here talking about. That Let's take that small town image and tweak it a little bit. Um, we've been talking about towns like Plymouth. We've been talking about you know, other towns like, well, you can look at what Milan did. Milan was in the same position with, you know, that we were, and they did an amazing turnaround. Look at Fenton. I remember Fenton in 92 was where we were, and if you go up there right now, it's amazing. It's beautiful. Why can't we do that? I think we should do that somewhere. You know, what do we want to be? I think we should take that small charm, image charm, and turn it into the city. We can walk the downtown areas with unique shops and places to go and places to eat. Not just pizza parlors, which I like pizza like everybody else, but not a million and two of them. We've got, you know, hair care places and pizza places. Maybe a fish joint would be nice or something, right? First off, I'd like to say that I think um, Bob and the Downtown Development Authority are doing a phenomenal job. There, if, if you read through that book over the next 10 years, it is unbelievable the amount of time and effort has been put into that thing and going over you know, who's paying for each update that they want, where the money is coming from. Um, it's been phenomenal. But as far as, you know, going forward, um, like I said, I, I really think uh, the community center um, aspect of it, you know, not, not just the teenagers, but, you know, four seniors um, that try to develop the areas, you know, next to um, the, the grocery store and the bar right here at the corner, you know, uh, work with some of the other um, business owners that have really not been keeping up their, um, their shops. You know, we know what the RCA looks like across the street. Um, just, you know, really, really work with, commu uh, I'm sorry, businesses to bring them in here and fill these vacant spaces and build more. I'd just like to reiterate what Billy said there is, um, Outside of going out here and selling the city uh, myself, Bob Donahue is an animal. I've seen him out there with groups of 20 and 40 possible business owners walking through this town, and he takes pride in this city and that whole team at the DDA. So we are in good hands with this. I think it's very important, though, that we, we keep everyone involved in all this. We do not want to lose the charm of the small town vibe that we have, but we also should not be afraid of expanding and, and opening our eyes to some new things here downtown. But really, at the end of the day, it comes down to what our citizens of the city want and making it vocal and letting us know what they want. Bob can only do so much with the businesses that come to us. With a little bit of feedback from our citizens here, Bob can go out and try and help and chase some of those businesses down as well. Um, just to go back on something too, I know we've been talking about this. Uh, an active or a community center. Um, there is a center for active adults at the South Line High School that is, does a fantastic job in this community. They are they are staffed wonderfully. And if you don't know much about it, I would encourage you to please check it out. It, it's the Center for Active Adults over at South Line High School. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I mostly just want to reiterate what's been said because, wow, they're doing a great job over here. Um, Bob Donahue has been doing a fantastic job with the Downtown Development Authority, um, bringing in those new businesses, showing them around town, and kind of helping develop our downtown into a place where there's something for everyone. You know, when date night rolls around, I don't want to be thinking, oh, do I go to Brighton? Do I go to Northville? Like, where do I go? I want to be going, which new restaurant am I trying downtown tonight? Like, okay, are we driving or are we walking? Like, it's going to be great because having all of those places where it's something for everyone downtown, it's gonna bring all of us together as a community. And it's gonna be great. Um, I'm really excited to see what, uh, what Bob Donahue has in store for us. Uh, thanks. So a little bit more about my background. I grew up in Alpena. So I know what a small town vibe is like and I know what hanging on to that small town vibe feels like. Um, it's the whole reason I moved to South Lyon, right? You drive here and you see the woods and you see the farms and um, it just has a small town feel and it feels good and I want to keep that. Um, Alpena has grown and I would like, and I think that the reason that it has is because they took what's important to them, 
like the lakes and the water, and they designed all of their growth around that. South Lion has something very fantastic and unique. Our walking trails are beautiful. We have a running community, a walking community, biking. We are so active and we need to take that and build on it because it's important. It's part of our image. It's part of what makes us good. Thank you. How will you handle the division on the city council? <laughs> How, how will you handle the division on the city council? Every single person I've talked to has actually asked me this question. Yeah? <laughs> All right. So it, it's obvious. I, um, it's like teams when you watch a city council meeting. What I find, actually, is that the people on city council are really passionate. They just don't all agree. And they, they can't come to a conclusion together because sometimes they get a little prideful about things. Sometimes politics get in the way. Sometimes they start thinking about what their next move is past what they're doing today. I would like people to start living in the moment. I like to run meetings um, using a, my background in positive business and in letting everybody speak and have their time and trying to kind of throw away that that negativity I think fear-mongering is not okay and I don't think that the city should take it and I don't think that the City Council should take it um, so when I watch these meetings at, at first glance it seems like a lot of fighting and bickering um, but when I really listen to the words being used, I, I hear a lot of passion, and I hear the same overarching goal of moving the city to a better place. Um, all of these council members, as far as I've seen, want the same thing for the city. They want it to be great. They want us to all want to live here and be happy here. It's fantastic. That said, they might have different ways of going about it and different ways of expressing those emotions. Um, I feel that with my problem-solving skills, my people skills, I can really sift through those emotions kind of analyze the arguments behind them and help come to a solution that works for everyone. Thanks. I would have to say that this is probably one of the most uh, common questions that we've all been faced with. Um, and, and it's really simple, I feel like. Uh, these are elected officials and they are adults. And we need to treat each other with respect. You do not need to talk down to me. You do not need to talk down to anyone else because they have a different idea of what you have. And I think that's really where we need to start on the whole thing. Um, we can have different agendas and different ideas and game plans, but um, the, the lack of respect for each other will not be tolerated. And, and I can promise you that if I'm in that seat. Um, you know, there, there's ways to make sure that that would happen. Um, and and if, if, there, if, the, um, if that opportunity presents itself, um, but hopefully, you know, with the fresh start, in an olive branch and, and, a, and a brand new canvas to start with a new council, I think we're going to be moving in a, in a good direction. And it's something that hopefully the city will be able to move past and put uh, behind it as we move forward. Yeah, the last uh, few meetings that I've been going to, you know, most of city council has been pretty, you know, on top of it. They've been moving forward um, and you know, trying to work together, and like I said, my uh, the methodology that I use in meetings is, you know, you basically you define what the problem is, you suggest some solutions to it, you discuss it, but it's not it's not emotion based, it's it's factual based. What are the facts, and then what is the best solution moving forward? Um, I think you know a lot of a lot of heated debate gets just because the same thing gets said over and over and a lot of people just get frustrated with hearing the same thing and you know that's that's part of the mayor's role is to say hey we've already discussed that let's move on let's keep this meeting going forward you know meetings don't need to go till midnight 1 a.m that you know just just what's the problem what are the solutions and what is the best solution for the citizens thank you i've noticed then in politics, there tends to be a speech that's called overtalk. And when you 
want to get your agenda through, you just keep over talking the other person or situation, which is a passive aggressive move that eventually they'll give in and you'll get what you want. I think, like my colleague here pointed out earlier, we're way past that on this point in time in the city. We need to make some choices, good choices, to move forward. As far as a division in council, it's not elementary school. And I'd sit back, I'd breathe, I'd listen to them, and then I'd say, okay, are we going to do something to move the city forward now? Or, you know, is there another place you'd prefer to work instead? <laughs> Honestly. And that might sound trite, but if they're not happy there, I don't think they should be there. You know, and I think it's about moving the city forward, not infighting. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what he's saying. At the same time, um, from what I've seen and watched, a lot of times people get emotional. They have a lot of pride in what they're talking about, and they're saying it a certain way, or the other person saying it a certain way, and they're really not that far off. It's basically, I sit back, I listen, and come and propose, hey, this is what you're saying. Well, let, let's, let's, let's word it this way, and see if he agrees to it or she agrees to it. And, and basically just, it's, I'm a dad, I know how it is. Sometimes you gotta sit down and, and you gotta straighten your kids out and really they're arguing about something but they both want the same thing. And I know our city all wants the same thing. So it's basically sitting there, watching them talk about what they're talking about and maybe possibly uh, relaying it back, maybe a different, some different wordage that'll allow them to agree to get into the same, so they can agree on something that we can move forward. Because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We want our city to be great and continue to be great. So it's um, pretty much controlling the meeting and, and, and working with your colleagues if, if you'd like to be mayor and the colleagues would be city council. Final question. Only one candidate mentioned seniors in their opening remarks. Where do the rest of you stand, or where do each of you stand with regard to our senior community? Well, it's a good question. I think everybody wants to be cared for, right? I think that seniors are just as important as me, as important as kids in South Lyon. I think that we need to make sure that everybody's cared for and everybody's heard and that, that we're not just focusing on one group and that we're not just focusing on one group to get elected. I want to be everybody's representative. As much as I love to represent all the people, which I do, um, I, I do really respect our senior citizen community. Um, they put their heart and soul and time into this community, volunteering at events, helping out with everything. Um, I've been working with the, South, or the Qantas Club of South Lyon for, for a little while now. And, you know, that club, most of the people putting in most of the time are our seniors. Uh, they're really passionate about this community, making it a place for everyone, helping even stuff Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt, um, putting on a, a dinner for the seniors every you know, Christmas, um, which I'm excited to help out at that holiday dinner this year. Um, they really do put their heart and souls into this community, and I want to make sure that as a community we're giving our heart and souls back to them. Thanks. <clears throat> I can't stress how important the senior citizen community is to the city of South Line. Um, I am weekly in the Center for Active Adults over at South Line High School. Um, I thoroughly enjoy the conversations that we have over there and having them as part of our community. Um, I've been involved over there and helping with them annually in the AARP to do their taxes. Um, it's, it's not just you know, staying in touch and doing the right thing. These people have a lot of good ideas and are very much involved in our community. And also, um, I've been in over at Colonial Acres several times while um, on the campaign trail and talking to people at the, the Phase 5 Clubhouse during coffee hour and, and wanting to hear what, what is it that is affecting you and, and what can we do to help, um, you know, all of our senior citizens that are such an important part of the community. The senior citizen community is huge here. I, I mean, there's no way around that. 
you know, and I think the biggest thing is, again, going back to taxes. Most of the seniors are on a fixed income. They cannot afford a tax increase by any shape of the mind, you know. You, you're limited on what you can do, and I think, you know, I know Lynn um, goes to the uh, meetings um, the first Monday, and I think that's great. And I think there needs to be more open communication um, with the seniors. You know, is there, and I would like to see along with everybody else, you know, more people at the city council meetings voicing their opinions because, you know, like Dan said, everybody has an idea. You know, what, what's your guys? Just bring it forth. Thanks. Seniors. I think in today's hectic, electronic, compartmentalized world, if you want to know what I think, I think you guys get forgotten about. Until it comes election time and then you get remembered. I think teens get forgotten about. I think single moms get forgotten about. I think a lot of people do because we're so busy with tunnel vision here that you know we only think of like what's there I think you have a lot to offer I, I grew up my parents were older when I came around I was a surprise <laughs> and so um, but I learned a wealth of knowledge I got to I got to learn about like the depression and, and the golden agers I got to learn about you know like the 50s and then well obviously I was born in the 60s and grew up in the 70s but you guys have so much knowledge and common sense that our society today is sorely lacking and so I think we need to show you a lot more respect that's what I think seniors I have a, I have a sweet spot for you guys because you guys have been around longer than I have and you guys know what works and what doesn't work so when you can come to somebody that's been around and taken some of that wisdom from them uh, it can really help me make my decisions on what I have to do and the route that I want our city council to go and again senior citizens can't afford any taxes they're on a fixed income they're basically retired um, so we need to offer more services to them to to help them out to benefit them to give them local discounts to basically take care of you guys mm -hmm. you guys are the ones that have the morals and have and have the respect and, and have been down this road a lot longer than I have so the one thing I would do with the senior citizens is listen really listen to what you guys have to say and try to make that happen for you guys thank you that completes the questioning part now we move into the one minute you each have one minute to make a closing argument starting with mr young well we've all heard uh fire department police um that's not an option if i'm elected mayor uh people have talked about possibly working side by side with oakland county not not a good idea uh, if it's a last resort it's a last resort nothing against them but half of those guys come out to do their last four years and retire out here in safe south lion instead of being in pontiac at the same time is to grow the business the businesses to our city take care of our senior citizens keep our city one of the safest in the state let alone the country uh, work side by side with local communities so we can take some of their ideas and make us even greater than we are now um, and basically just Keep us moving in the right direction. Work with city council. If I'm elected mayor, those will be my colleagues, and try to get down to get down to the bottom of things and keep us moving in the right direction. And again, it's all about budgeting, finding out where the bleeding's happening, fix that, because only band-aids last so long. Sometimes you might have to cut some stuff off or move it up again. 401 k is moving over is a good thing, but um, basically, listen to you guys and listen to the people. Have an open door policy and. Uh, try to do the best I can for you guys. Thank you. In the Navy, as a corpsman, if you're rushing into a scene, you got about 60 seconds to go in, formulate a plan, make a decision, and take what you got and make it work. I think you need to go in, see what's working, what's not working, and just get them to stop and communicate first and communicate with you guys. I think we need to slow the traffic down and yes you know 
there, the businesses have been a lot better than it was, but we need foot traffic and we need an image. I want to be here, I want to shop there. Those things happen, need to happen there. I think we need to be much more community involved. I think we need more community events. Everybody loves the hot rod shows. I do. You know, I'm a, I'm a runner and a bicyclist. And, you know, the guys at South Line Cycle, they take care of, you know, my race bike for me. And, you know, why don't we have a bike show? Why don't we have more walking events? We need more events to put us in the map. And I think we should start with those. Just keep it simple. Uh, like I've said, my my goal is to come in and start off with effective meetings, make sure that everybody is being heard and that the communication between city government and the citizens is, is more open. I, I want to do everything there is to get more people involved, be it with other planning commissions to understand what different branches of government do, um, but mainly just, just get the meetings done, over with, and get the city moving in the right direction and be the face for this town moving forward and working with everybody. Um, there's no, you know, opinions are opinions. Um, they're neither right nor wrong, but everybody is due the respect to listen to the opinion. Um, and I really want to work on that um, and figure out the solutions that need to be figured out for the town. <coughs> Thanks, Bill. I believe that I will be the best choice to be the next mayor of South Lyon. My experience interfacing with local government as a member of the Cable Commission and love for our city will help me be an effective consensus builder, driven to solve the complex problems that South Lyon both now and will face now and in the future. I take this job very seriously. I do not view it as a ceremonial position, as some may say, and it is not just a resume builder for me. I'm in this for the long haul, and I feel that we can have a real impact on the positive progression of the city that I've called home since the day I was born. Thank you all for coming today, and I want to thank everyone that has helped me get to this point. Remember to write in Dan Pelchat for mayor on November 7th. Thank you all. Um, once again, I'd love to give a big thank you to the organizers over at the Salem South Lion Library. Um, without them, we wouldn't have this event. Same with the South Lion Theater. Thank you guys for allowing us to come into your space and provide this information to the public. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much to our moderator. You've done a great job. <laughs> um, and of course, a huge thank you to all of you audience members for being here today, listening, and giving us those wonderfully insightful questions to be able to answer. Um, also, thank you, of course, for those tuning in on Channel 19 and watching this video later. Um, I truly love living in South Lyon. I'm really passionate about giving back to this special community, and I really hope you consider me when casting your ballot on November 7th. Thanks. So, <clears throat> the job of mayor has been described as an anti-politician, and I think that I'm just the person for that. You, you need somebody who's a doer and a striver somebody who will be the cheerleader for the town, make us look good and believe that we look good and believe in, in a formula to make it all work. Follow through with the master plan, take suggestions from citizens, and then drive those with the city council. I think that, I think that if you vote me as a write-in candidate for mayor, you'll be doing the right thing for your city. Thank you all. Um, as a reminder, I have to look I don't have my close-up glasses on. Um, thank you all for coming out. The forum was videotaped and streamed on South Lion Cable 19, and you'll be able to find it uh, on the library Vimeo site, uh, vimeo.com slash SSLDL following the event. Um, thank you everyone for coming and thank you candidates. <laughs>